You're listening to Art Business Mentor, the radio show. I'm your host, Gary Crook, and you're listening to Talk Radio 1080 WKJK. Today we're discussing observation of an arts and craft fair. Uh, Previously, very quick, I highlighted uh, know your audience, not disposable enough for resale, and number three, nor do they... uh, excuse me, change product lines, Uh, in other words, keep fresh product lines. So let's go on to the next one. Stop entertaining the audience and start selling, okay? This is a big, big, big beef with me, okay, guys? Number one, stop painting or making your artwork or jewelry or whatever on the spot at the show. Don't do that. Okay, this is a time to sell, and heaven knows you are not going to have a lot of times to sell, so whenever you get opportunities to sell, then you get your butt cheeks up there and you start selling, because this is a time to sell. You do your artwork at home, in your studio, or whatever, this is a time to sell. Do not sit up there and make your jewelry and make and paint your artwork and attempt to think that somebody's going to see the brilliance in what you're doing and turn around and these products are going to sell themselves. I've talked about that a million times. And this is probably one of the bigger beefs of this, uh, this argument, is when you, when you do your painting and you do your jewelry on the spot, the biggest part is, is you start, you're giving away your secrets. Stop doing that. You're killing your own market when you do this because oftentimes, you're showing people exactly <clears throat> how to do that themselves, or more specifically, how simple it is to do it, and especially if they recognize that these beads and stuff were bought at Hobby Lobby because they were just there yesterday. Or worse yet, you're possibly increasing your competition, okay? Because everybody is shopping everybody else, and that includes the other vendors that are around you, okay? So stop doing your artwork on the spot. That's a big beef because you're turning yourself into kind of a little circus act here, and this isn't entertainment as much as it is a business. Now, the two do go hand in hand, but I'm not getting into that right now. So don't just don't do that, okay? This is a time to sell, and opportunities to sell come up very, very rarely, and when they do, you need to grasp that opportunity and continue to, uh, you know, generate cash flow. This is all about cash flow, guys. Okay, um, and then another one. You are not going to be, quote, unquote, discovered here, okay? So this is a time to make money. This kind of goes with the, oper- the idea of not creating, you know, an entertainment venue at your booth. This is a time for cash flow. So stop trying to hit a home run every single time uh, you come up to the plate. Every time you have a show, that goes back to uh, trying to bring only original paintings, for example, or high, extremely high dollar, high bulky artworks at a booth where people oftentimes have to ride a trolley to get there and then turn around and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, And in other words, you're not going to sell anything. So basically, stop trying to hit a home run. This is time. What you want to do is instead shoot for the nice, safe singles, if you're a baseball fan, because these singles, these one, uh, you know, these hits that drop right behind the infield and get you to first base every single time, this will eat your opponent alive. This is kind of the tortoise and the hare theory here. And, and your opponents, of course, are the other artists around you who are constantly going for the fences, but striking out doggone hair every time. And I'm hugely guilty of this. Um, many years ago, I, I used to do the art fair on, uh, Santa, on the Santa Barbara Wharf. And I was, a, I was, of course, a painter at the time. And I was doing paintings. And this particular art show would not allow uh, original paintings. I'm sorry. Excuse me. They would not allow prints, signed prints at the show. Everything had to be original. The only caveat there was that uh, photographs were allowed in triplicate. You could do as many of the damn photographs as you wanted, and a lot of that had to do with the uh, the elite that were calling the shots on who got in the show and who did not, and a majority of them were photographers. Okay, now having said all that, I can't tell you how many Sundays I sat down on Stern's Wharf in Santa Barbara, California, me and my wife, pissing and moaning because... I'll, my cheapest painting I had was like 250 bucks, and they went on upwards to 2500 I'm thinking, well, what the hell, man? This is Santa Barbara, California. This is, these people have bucks. These people have money. 
Why aren't they buying it? Well, the fact of the matter is, is I was wrong on two instances. Number one, I wasn't looking at my audience, which was a majority of them were tour buses. And we're talking like European, like German, English, Italy, uh, you know, tourists. These were tourists. And these were tour buses that would pull up to the side there. These guys would get out, and they had, you know, you okay, everybody, you have 45 minutes to shop. We're going to get back in and go have dinner or lunch, blah, blah, blah. So, in other words, you know, I was, you know, this goes back to what I was saying before about know your audience. And uh, the guys that were around me that were photographing, you know, Santa Barbara, California, um, and some of them were very serious photographers, and you know, in their own right. In other words, they weren't always uh, photographing Santa Barbara, California. They had kind of a dual art career going. But these guys were snapping pictures of seagulls. These guys were snapping pictures of sunsets. These guys were snapping pictures of everything around them that was in Santa Barbara. They were all they were shooting these things out on eight by tens that were matted, and they weren't framed. They were just matted, and I think they were selling for like twenty five bucks a pop. And these guys were selling constantly. They were hitting singles constantly. Where I was always going for the fence, man. Boom, going for the fence. You know, strike one, strike two, strike three. And I did that show for six months. I sold one painting, and I did actually sell it to a guy who was actually a cop. And his wife that lived in Ventura, which was, you know, down the road a little bit. But the point here is, is this was all around me. These guys around me that were making really good money were selling these little prints for 25 bucks. They were doing photography, which I could have easily uh, have done myself. I just chose not to get into photography at the time. I was fighting it. I was a painter. I was a painter's painter. So anyway, this was a, this was hu it was a humongous catastrophic waste of my time. Now, the only thing I can say is I did thoroughly enjoy my time down there because Santa Barbara was gorgeous and sitting on Stern's Wharf was a blast because of all the people that were around. But more often than not, uh, I wasn't utilizing the first, what, three, four, five criteria of that I just knocked out. Know your audience. I was My audience was not Santa Barbara people. These were tourists from Europe that had just enough, you know, size or space in their in their bags to put in like a single photograph you know not disposable enough for resale in other words um you know these were paintings these were just and some of them were huge these were big paintings um and <clears throat> nor did i ever change my product line i wasn't keeping fresh ideas i was bringing the same damn paintings out every single time and then uh and i wouldn't say i was entertaining i wasn't entertaining but i sure as heck wasn't selling now that's not to say that when people came up and asked questions i didn't give up get up and give away uh you know uh, give away my secret i didn't give away my secrets i got up and you know tried to attempt to do the sales but it was a huge this was a, the big thing was that it was an audience thing and the, probably the biggest one is what i started this segment off about being discovered here you know my thinking is that hey somebody's going to come along the beach see this terrific artist sitting out on the beach doing this show with all my original paintings and uh, they're going to discover me. So here I am actually, I do actually know a little bit of what I'm talking about here. Okay, we're going to go to a commercial break. You're listening to Art Business Mentor, the radio show on Talk Radio 1080 WKJK. Hey, small business, are you looking for a unique new advertising opportunity this year? Well, maybe you should try Art Business Mentor, the radio show. We're currently seeking to partner with local businesses that are supporting the arts industry. So go to artbusinessmentor.com and click that little link on the left called Become a Partner. There you'll see all the benefits you get for your advertising dollar. We also have excellent opportunities for new clients, so check it out. Artbusinessmentor.com, become a partner. Psst. yeah, you. Come here a minute. Have you heard about the new revolution? It's called silent screen propaganda. It's a worldwide revolution for change. One shirt at a time. Go check it out at silentscreenpropaganda.com and get involved. Come on, man. Silentscreenpropaganda.com and get involved. Pass it on. 